Good evening viewers and aspirants. Welcome to the Hindi News Analysis brought to you by Shankar Ice Academy. Today I'll be covering the Hindi News edition dated 8th of July 2022. These are the articles I have taken for discussion today. Some of them are important from the prelims perspective and some are important in the mains perspective. Pay attention to the analysis so that you can answer the practice questions at the end of the session. Now let us get to the discussion. So today we are going to start our news article discussion with this news article it talks about the relationship of the toda tribe with their buffaloes so according to the news article the tribe and their buffaloes have been gradually pushed to the margins this is happening since the colonial times and the reason for this is because the pristine grasslands in the upper slopes of nilgiri hills have been gradually disappearing these grasslands are an important source of food for the community's cattle and also for the community's cultural ethos so their destruction is affecting the tribe and their buffaloes this is what is mentioned in this news article but from exam perspective we need to know about the toda tribe and also their important relationship with their buffaloes let us know that now see toda is a name given to the tribe by english but in their own language an individual of the tribe is called as todan and in plural it is called todaru todaru means herdsmen so it is clear that toda tribe is a pastoral community they live on the plateau of nilgiri hills of southern india so once this tribe was nomads but the construction of dams and different development process modified the lands so nowadays they are becoming settled community in the nilgiri district of tamil nadu also know that their language is called toda language it is a dravidian language Now one of the important features of this tribe is they follow polyandry. Polyandry means a woman has more than one husband. So in this community one woman gets married to all the male members of the family and they would all be her husband. See here the community follows fraternal polyandry only. That means the brothers in the family only share one wife. And when a toda woman becomes pregnant one of her husband proclaims himself as the social father of her children. Now even their residential place is unique they reside in a structure called mund as you can see in this image and this mund is surrounded by a tract of grazing land and most of these houses consist of only one room also the dressing of toda people is interesting they use a solitary piece of fabric around themselves it is called as puttukuli these fabrics or clothes have patterns and symbols on them which resembles the traces of their ancestors Another important fact to note is only men participate in the ceremonial dances but it said that in the recent times women have also begun dancing and from exam perspective also note that todas have been declared as a particularly vulnerable tribal group in the state of Tamil Nadu now let us come to the question of why and how buffaloes are important for this community see the buffalo in this community is given the name of toda buffaloes such as the importance of this buffalo to this community this buffalo is one of the 17 known breeds of water buffalo it is a unique breed and it is a genetically isolated population which is confined to the nilgiri hills of tamil nadu so this is the main speciality of this buffaloes because they have become accustomed to the high altitude shola grassland regions of the nilgiri hills and to achieve this unique breed selective breeding has been done for more than 5000 years also note that these buffaloes exclusively thrive on grazing alone no money is spent on feeding these animals and no supplementary feeding is also practiced but the problem now as mentioned in the news article is the population of these toda buffalo is less than 2000 and it is already in the endangered category so steps need to be taken to revive its population now if we come to the relationship of todas with their buffalo see it started in ancient times todas believe that the buffaloes were created by their goddess taikrishi so for them their buffaloes are sacred and secular due to this todas also associate the buffaloes with their temple rituals the rituals are completed only with the milk from the buffaloes attached to that particular temple buffaloes are also important in their traditions it is even given as dowry in a marriage ceremony apart from this buffaloes are also economically important for todas see todas don't cultivate crops of any kind and also they are not known to take occupation rather they only rear buffalo so buffaloes is also economically important for them the buffalo milk and milk products form the basis of their entire economy it is said that 
This buffalo milk has high fat content of 8.27 percentage. So overall, the buffaloes are not only economically important for the Todas, but they also hold a traditional and cultural space in the Toda lifestyle. So these are some of the points that you have to know about the Toda tribe. Now let us get to the next discussion. So now we are going to take up this editorial article for discussion. What it says? It says that the Union Environment Ministry has proposed to amend sections of some key environmental legislations. And through this, it is trying to make these legislations less threatening. So this has raised the question of whether this move will lead to more environmental crimes. So in this context, today we are going to focus on what are environmental crimes. We'll see what are the penalties under uh, Indian environmental laws. And we'll also see what are the proposed amendments. Before that... This is the syllabus that you can link with the discussion. You can take note of it. Let us begin with the understanding of what do we mean by the term environmental crime. See, so simply it is the crime against environment and wildlife. It includes the acts that cause damages to the environment and wildlife around us. They are considered as a category under the organized criminal activities around the globe. Actually, it is the fourth largest area of crime in the list of organized crimes. See, actually, environmental crime is also known as ecocide. It literally means to kill the environment. You would have heard about the term uh, homicide, right? It means killing of human beings. So, in the same way, ecocide means to kill the environment. And it is the crime against ecosystems. It could also be, you know, used to refer any human activity that substantially damages or destroys the environment. So, you can use environmental crimes or ecocide interchangeably. Here, let me give you an additional fact. See, there is also something called as green criminology. This branch studies about environmental harms, ecological justice and environmental laws, etc. And this green criminology is gaining focus in today's world because we are already dealing with the impacts of climate change and global warming. That is why environmental crime is an important area and a potential one also under the UPSC mains topics. So now let us see what activities are categorized as environmental crimes. See, definitely it includes poaching, that means killing of uh, animals for their skin, meat, etc. Then it also includes illegal trade of wildlife. This trade could also be again for its meat or its other products or even for using it as a pet. Then the trade of unregulated and illegal products for financial and material gains is also a crime. For example, trade of timber, ivory, rhino horns, sandalwood, red sanders, all these are prohibited in our country and even in other countries. Along with this unreported fishing, illegal logging, all these also fall under the category of environmental crime. Now note that all these five uh, categories are listed by the United Nations Inter-Regional Crime and Justice Research Institution. Now let us see what is the extent of environmental crime in India. If you take India as a whole, around 61,767 cases have been reported in 2020 itself under the environment crime category. So this is an increase from the previous year. The increase is about as much as 78 percentage compared to 2019. Now here you should remember that 2020 was the period of first wave of pandemic and lockdowns, right? So even in that time, environmental crimes continued. Now, if you look at the state-wise data, it is provided by the State of India's Environment Report. According to this, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan and Maharashtra, they accounted for 77% of India's wildlife crimes in the year 2019. Even NCRB, that is National Crime Records Bureau, has a data on this category, According to it, India's overall crime cases under this category increased by 78% in 2020. We saw this already. Now, according to NCRB's report, Tamil Nadu recorded the highest number of environment-related crimes. There were more than 42,000 cases. Rajasthan is second in line with uh, more than 9,500 cases and Uttar Pradesh is third. It has nearly 3,000 cases in 2020 in the environmental-related crimes categories. So the conclusion from these data is environmental crimes or ecocide is prominent in India. But we also have legislations that deal with uh, these kinds of environmental crimes, right? There are actually eight cornerstone pieces of legislation which define a regulatory framework to ensure that the natural resources and wildlife are not widely exploited in our country. And these legislations are given here. It includes the Forest Act, 
Forest Conservation Act, Wildlife Protection Act, Environmental Protection Act, then Air Act and Water Act, Noise Pollution Act, then Natural Green Tribunals Act. Now here note that even the Cigarette and Other Tobacco Products Act, which is in short called as uh, COPTA Act, it is also included in one of the important pieces of environmental legislations list. See, this particular act places restrictions on smoking, sale, promotion and advertising, packing of tobacco products. And it also includes certain uh, activities that have minor environmental impact and these are prohibited. For example, like, you know, smoking in uh, public and use of plastic packaging for tobacco products, all these are banned and these constitute the environmental crimes under this act. And even these are punished in our country. Now, keeping this in mind, let us see in brief how much of environment-related crimes are registered under this act. If you take the COPTA Act, four-fifths of uh, environment-related crimes are registered under this itself. There are nearly 5,000 cases of violations of this law, and it accounts for 80% of total environmental-related cases in our country in the year 2020. And the next important ones are the Noise Pollution Act. See, violation of noise pollution control laws in both the union and state governments form the second highest number of environmental related cases. It accounted for 11.8 percentage of total cases. So only the remaining 8 to 9 percentage cases are filed under the other acts. And these other acts include the, you know, Forest Act and the Forest Conservation Act. According to the data, Uttar Pradesh reported the highest number of cases in the country under these acts. And if you take uh, Wildlife Protection Act, there were uh, nearly 670 cases here. And here also UP had the highest number of cases. It is followed by Rajasthan. Then if you take the Environmental Protection Act, here totally there were uh, around 990 cases. And again, here UP registered the highest number of cases. See, these data are important because you can cite these data when you mention about the effectiveness of these legislations in your main answer writing. And you can also see these data in two ways. In one angle, you can say that India has legislations that even captures the minor uh, environmental crimes. And you can also say that the legislations like the COPTA Act, that registers more cases than other important environment and wildlife related acts. So we can say these acts like Forest Act, Forest Conservation Act, Wildlife Protection Act, Environmental Protection Act are not enforced in a proper manner. This is one of the inferences from these data. Now we saw the extent of crimes registered. Now let us see the penalties for these crimes in Indian legislations. Now we saw eight Indian legislations, right? There we did not see about Indian Penal Code. See, even Indian Penal Code punishes environmental related offenses. It generally covers water and atmosphere related offenses. And for these, high penalties are provided in Indian Penal Code. Particularly, the chapter 14 of Indian Penal Code deals with offences affecting public health and safety. The sole purpose of this chapter is to make those acts punishable which pollute environment or threatens the life of the people. So, if you take one section under this uh, chapter, according to it, when someone vitiates or destroys the atmosphere in any place in such a way that it makes the atmosphere noxious to the health of the persons, then this is punishable. It is punished with fine, which may extend to 500 rupees. You have to remember that Indian Penal Code is a old law. So even the monetary punishments or fines are uh, quite low. Now let us take up the another important act of Environmental Protection Act. Under this, whoever fails to comply with the provisions of the act or whoever contravenes any provisions of the act, they will be punishable with uh, imprisonment for up to five years or with fine up to one lakh rupees or even both. But you have to note that if this offense is repeated, then additional fine of rupees 5000 is imposed for every day that crime is repeated. And even then, if the failure or the contravention continues beyond a period of one year, then at this juncture, the punishment is much severe. Here the punishment is imprisonment up to seven years. So that means for committing crimes under Environmental Protection Act repeatedly, one can be jailed for seven years. Let me take an example here. See, there is a provision in EPA which talks about the punishment for emission or discharge of environmental pollutants in excess of the prescribed standards. These standards are prescribed uh, in the Environmental Protection Rule and the Schedule 1 under these rules. Now, if these 
standards are not followed then that person or a person who is uh, owning that industry will be punishable with the contravention of the act provision and just now we saw that for contravention the fine is uh, 1 lakh rupees and there could be imprisonment of 5 years of also and if this crime is repeated again and again and if it continues to even more than 1 year then the imprisonment could be 7 years now let us take next important act which is the wildlife protection act here for committing a crime under the act or contravening its provision the punishment is imprisonment up to 3 years or with fine which may extend to 25000 rupees or both that is fine and imprisonment but under wildlife protection act the punishment is also severe for certain crimes here the punishment will be imprisonment of 3 to 7 years and uh, along with the fine of 10000 rupees and this severe punishment is applicable for crimes like you know any offense that is committed in relation to any animal specified in schedule 1 or schedule 2 part 2 of the act it is also applicable when the offense is related to meat of any such animal in these schedules or their animal article trophy or uncute trophy derived from such animals and also when the offense is related to hunting in a sanctuary or a national park then also this is the punishment along with these altering the boundaries of a sanctuary or a national park is also a serious crime attracting these kinds of punishments so like this all other important environment related legislations have criminalized several activities and they have also provided penalties for the same but today we are talking about environmental crimes because as i said in the beginning proposal has been made by uh, environment ministry which aims to amend sections of certain key environmental legislations and through this they want to make these legislations less threatening to potential violators so here they simply want to decriminalize those legislations that is they will be removing the imprisonment part and monetary fines will be applied in these occasions for example according to the proposal simple violations would attract only monetary fines instead of imprisonment but the amendments also state that in case of serious environmental crimes that cause grave injury or death then it would invite imprisonment under indian penal code and appropriate legislation this is the overall crux of the amendments to these legislations let me take the example of environmental protection act because amendments have been also proposed for this act and the proposed amendment has mentioned that submitting reports and furnishing information under the act these all will be you know under the category of simple violations of epa and when these are simple violations then it would be dealt through imposing penalty which will be imposed by a duly authorized adjudicating officer but when we saw about the punishments under uh, environment legislations i said that any contravention of the provisions of epa will attract imprisonment also fines but now there will be only monetary penalty previously the punishment was imprisonment up to 5 years and uh, fine was up to 1 lakh rupees and repeated offense the uh, punishment was up to 7 years imprisonment but now under the proposed amendment there is no imprisonment at all there is only monetary penalty which is from 5 lakh to 5 crore rupees and when the offense is repeated here the monetary penalty is more it is from 50000 rupees to 5 lakh for each day when the offense is repeated so similar kinds of decriminalizing amendments have been proposed for air act and water act also we'll see these amendments when these are uh, introduced in the gazette or when a separate editorial comes under this topic see here we can lot the fact that the quantum of potential fines has been raised definitely 5 crore fine is more but whether decriminalizing will be effective or not is a big question but then why government has taken this move the first reason given by the government is it wants to clear out the fear of imprisonment for simple violations they say when the violation is quite simple there is no need for imprisonment a simple monetary penalty is enough and the second reason given by the government is pending cases see so it is said that more than 90% of cases are pending for trial under five major environmental laws along with this an analysis by the center for science and environment has found that indian courts take between 9 to 33 years to clear a backlog of cases for environmental violations 9 to 33 years you just imagine so the government is arguing that if fines are imposed instead of imprisonment then it could theoretically help with faster redress mechanism these are the two major reasons uh, provided by the government for uh, bringing the amendments see even these reasons have loopholes 
as you can see clearly for example even now the fines are large right then this again will be contested in the courts so this again will lead to burdening of courts and more pending cases so stating the reason of more cases or more pending cases in the courts is not a valid one and the author of the editorial is of the same view so the conclusion is steps must be taken to provide justice for environmental crimes quickly and equitably and for example as a measure fast track courts could be used for dealing with serious environmental crimes so measures like this can be taken to deal with the environmental crimes quickly and equitably rather than decriminalizing them this is only one suggestion there could be other suggestions which we may see in the coming days so i hope you had a wholesome picture of what are environmental crimes and which legislations deal with these environmental crimes and how the proposed amendments will work and what are the problems in these amendments with these facts in mind now let us get to the next discussion so this article here it talks about an island called snake island according to the news article russia's defense ministry has said that a russian warplane has struck and killed an unspecified number of ukrainian troops on snake island the ukrainian troops landed in this island to raise ukrainian flag but now they have been attacked and killed by russian troops so in this manner let us know the importance of this island so this island is also known as the serpent island or uh, zmi island it is a small piece of rock which is less than 700 meters from end to end its shape is described as being x shaped so where it is located it is located in the black sea it is located 35 km from the ukrainian coast in black sea it lies to the east of uh, the mouth of danube river and it also lies roughly to the southwest of the port city of odessa now let us see why it is important it is important because russia can use this island as a staging ground for an assault on odessa city see odessa is ukraine's main black sea port already here russia is blocking food cargoes from grain suppliers along with this russia also controls a large stretch of ukraine's black sea coast it controls the crimean peninsula and the entire sea of azov now in addition to this holding snake island was the final piece of the blockade of odessa because in this island russia could install long range air defenses such as s400 air missile system and it could threaten ukraine also know that this snake island is close to the sea lanes that leads to bosphorus sea and mediterranean sea and through this the island gives russia the entire control of black sea also see as you know black sea is bound by ukraine to the north and northwest and uh, russia and georgia is to its east turkey is to its south and then bulgaria and romania are to its west and this black sea links the sea of marmara through the bosphorus sea and it also links the aegean sea through the dardanelles sea and this black sea has traditionally been russia's warm water gateway to europe so holding the black sea not only provides a stepping stone to reach the mediterranean sea but it also acts as a strategic buffer between nato and russia see here the domination of black sea is a geostrategic imperative for russia this is not only to show russia's power in the mediterranean but it is also to secure the economic gateway to key markets in southern europe due to these reasons russia has been trying to gain complete control of black sea since the crimean crisis of 2014 and even in the ongoing war also the domination of black sea is one of the major objectives of russia so by capturing snake island russia is closer to this objective and it will also help russia in the ukrainian war because after capturing snake island it reduces access of ukraine to the black sea that means this will reduce ukraine as a landlocked country so this will cripple ukraine's trade logistics and finally ukraine will be compelled to surrender to russia so these are the strategic importance of holding snake island by the russian government see whenever island of international importance is in news you should pay attention to that because a prelims question definitely comes in this topic so in this way remember that snake island is also known as serpent island which is locally known as zmi island and it is located in black sea now let us move on to the next discussion now let us take up this uh, text and context article today it is focusing on a newly launched program 
It is the Bharat New Car Assessment Program. See, it is India's first new car assessment program. In short, NCAP. That means we have to know about it, right? Before that, this is the syllabus that you can link with this discussion. Now, this Bharat New Car Assessment Program or in short, Bharat NCAP, as I said, is a new car safety assessment program. It proposes a mechanism of awarding star ratings to automobiles. The star rating is based upon the car's performance in certain tests. So what are these tests? Let's see them briefly. First test is the offset deformable barrier frontal impact test. See, this test replicates a crash between two cars of the same weight and speed. Both will be traveling at a speed of 64 km per hour. In this test, full width of the vehicle's front is not hit. Rather, one side of the vehicle's front hits the barrier, as you can see in this image. This is the first test. The second is side impact test. This test consists of a stationary test vehicle. And this stationary vehicle is struck on the driver's side by a crash cart, which is fitted with a deformable barrier element. This deformable barrier is of 1500 kgs and it has an impact velocity of around 50 km per hour. And it strikes the vehicle on the driver's side at a 90 degree angle. And the third test is pole side impact test. Here a card is propelled sideways at 29 km per hour against a rigid narrow pole. That is, the side of the car is crashed into a pole. So from these tests, you can understand that it is tested how much impact a car can withhold. They are trying to test that. Now from this table, you need not focus on other things, rather you should only know about the name of the test and the test speed and you should also focus on the area of assessment. Here the area of assessment is adult and child occupant protection. That is these tests are done to assess the protection that it provides when there is an occupant. Now after the performance in these tests, the cars are allocated star ratings. The star ratings range from 1 to 5. Here 5 is the maximum rating. And the star 1 means minimum rating. Here note that the testing of vehicles for this program will be carried out at testing agencies that have necessary infrastructure. And the Bharat NCAP will be taken care by Pune-based uh, Central Institute of Road Transport. It is a undertaking of central government. And the policy, that is the Bharat NCAP policy, will be implemented from April 1st of next year, 2023. And one important fact to note is Bharat NCAP standard is aligned with the global benchmarks. It is said that it is even beyond minimum regulatory requirements. Now to which vehicles or which types of vehicles it is applicable? It will be applicable to the motor vehicles of category M1 that are having gross vehicle weight less than 3.5 tons. This could be a vehicle that is manufactured in the country or imported into the country. See, generally, these category M1 motor vehicles are used for carriage of passengers. It comprises of eight seats in addition to driver seat. So, this is the M1 category motor vehicles. And Bharat NCAP applies only to M1 category motor vehicles. There are many other categories like A, C, L1, L2, M2, N1, N2, N3, T1, T2, T3, etc. But Bharat NCAP is only applicable to category M1. But what is the significance of such a policy? See, first, it empowers the consumers to make informed decisions. How? See, these regulations introduce the concept of safety rating of passenger vehicles or cars. Now, by seeing these ratings, the consumer can take informed decisions. If the rating is below 2, you can assume that the safety is not much good. So, you can avoid that car. Now, the second importance is, the star rating of Indian cars is based on crash tests. So it increases the export worthiness of these cars. And also when the cars have high ratings, it means there will be high structural safety and passenger safety. And all these will help in making automobile industry Atma Nirbhar. And it will also fulfill the mission of making India the number one automobile hub in the world. But there are certain challenges that need to be addressed first, particularly the main challenge is it requires a bigger infrastructure because it involves large-scale testing. And it also needs a huge budgetary support because then only it can be implemented successfully and in an expedited manner. Another problem is major Indian cities have dedicated only 6 to 10 percentage of their total land allocation to construction of transport infrastructure. So that is inadequate transport infrastructure in the cities according to their population and their requirements. So first, this needs to be addressed and then only Bharat NCAP can be 
implemented successfully. Now let us come to the question of is it up to the global standards? So already globally there is a global end cap. It is a major project of a foundation called Towards Zero Foundation. This Towards Zero Foundation is a UK registered charity. This global end cap serves as a platform for cooperation among new car assessment programs worldwide. It also promotes the universal adoption of United Nations most important motor vehicle safety standards worldwide. Through this, Global NCAP is existing as a standardized platform that establishes cooperation and coordination among NCAPs internationally. But if you take regional NCAPs, they are with respect to specific local conditions. So the problem is a car may have attained a good rating elsewhere, but it might not be the case in another geography. This is because of the separate manufacturing origins and the quality of materials used, etc, etc. For example, if you take the Euro NCAP, its test speed for pole side impact test is 32 km per hour. But we saw that under Bharat NCAP, the test speed is 29 km per hour. But this is as per the global standards and it does not satisfy Euro NCAP standards. So that means a car that has satisfied global NCAPs uh, standards has not satisfied Euro NCAP standards. So it may not be allowed in Europe. But one big purpose of Bharat NCAP is satisfied, which is to allow the manufacturers of vehicles to get their vehicles tested at India's own in-house testing facilities. And we should also be proud that Bharat NCAP is in line with global NCAP more or less. So these are few facts that you have to know about Bharat NCAP. We saw what is it, what are the tests that is compulsory under Bharat NCAP and what is the rating given and what is its significance. We also saw how it is in line with global NCAP and how it differs regarding regional NCAPs. So when you talk about making the automobile industry Atma Nirbhar, you can talk about Bharat NCAP as an example. Okay. So with this news article discussion, we are moving to the next session of practice questions discussion. Today I have two practice questions for you. Let me take the first one. It is a pair based question. On one side, famous tribe is given and on the other side, animal associated with this tribe is given. The first pair given is Rabaris, Karai Camel. Second pair, Maldharis, Buffaloes. Third pair, Toda, Gear Lion. See, in today's discussion, we saw about Toda tribe. It is not associated with lions, rather with buffaloes. So one pair is incorrect. That is the third pair. Now, if you talk about Maldharis, see, they live in the state of Gujarat and they have a symbiotic relationship with the lions of Gir Forest. So, this is also incorrectly matched. So, second pair is also incorrect. Now, if we come to the Rabaris, see, they are nomadic herders who live scattered throughout Gujarat and Rajasthan and originally only camels were their source of livelihood. And the camel that is associated with this region is Karai camel. So, this is a correct pair. But note that... Now, this tribal group also keep goat, sheep, cow or buffalo for their livelihood. Now, here if you look at the options, I have framed these options like the ones that was asked in the prelims 2022. You should get used to these options also. The question asks, how many pairs given above are correctly matched? Options given are only one pair, only two pairs, all three pairs, none of the pairs. Now, the moment you knew that Toda is not correctly associated with uh, buffaloes, that means either only one pair is correct or two pairs are correct or none of the pairs are correct. So these types of questions, you know, does not allow you to use the elimination technique. You have to know the answers correctly. Now, based on what I said, pair one is correct, two and three are incorrect. So our correct answer is option A, only one pair. Now, let me get this next question. Consider the following statements. First statement, Black Sea is connected to Sea of Marmara by Dardanelles Strait. See, Black Sea is important for prelims next year because Ukraine-Russia issue is making headlines. So anything related to Ukraine and Russia is important for our exam now. And Black Sea holds an important place in that. And this Black Sea is connected to the Sea of Marmara, not by the Dardanelles Strait, rather by Bosphorus Strait. So this is incorrect. First statement is incorrect. Second statement given is, Black Sea is bordered by Albania, Russia and Ukraine. We definitely know that Russia and Ukraine borders Black Sea, but Albania is not in the list. Rather, other countries like Georgia, Turkey, Bulgaria, Romania, they all border Black Sea. So both the statements given in this question are incorrect, but the question asks you to choose the correct statements. So the correct answer is option D, neither one nor two. And today I do not have a quiz question for you. Rather, I have taken 
two mains practice question since uh, mains is nearing those who have not started writing mains answers you can start today itself at least you can just jot down the points related to the topics that have been asked in the questions try to develop the habit of writing first then you try to write the points relevant to the question then you try to provide a answer comprehensively take it step by step now these two questions one is based on ecocide and the other one is based on new car assessment program see if you know what the term ecocide means then this first question is very easy and this next question can only be answered if you know about the new car assessment program at least you should know something about car assessment programs so that you can answer these kinds of questions interested aspirants can also post the answers uh, in the comment section when we get time we'll review your answer so with these informations i'm winding up today's sessions if you found today's session helpful click the like button share your experience in the comments and also you can share this video with your friends and those who have not subscribed to our channel please subscribe to it for receiving regular updates regarding civil services preparation i'll meet you all next week thank you